Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I was just accepted into boarding school, so I have to leave pretty soon. Okay, not the school I thought it was. And that's how you steal a show. Zoe 101, a TV show about a teenage girl and her friends at a boarding school in California and very little else, created by the same creator as Drake and Josh and The Amanda Show, and who would also go on to create iCarly and Victorious. It ran for four seasons over the course of a few years, and yet somehow, conversations of this show have lasted for all these years, for better or for worse. So today, we're going to continue those conversations and talk about the general history of Zoe 101. And as usual, I'll be covering the general history of its development, production, how long it aired, and any other significant events that have occurred since the show ended. And we'll only be discussing things about the show related to Nickelodeon. So the cast reunion from 2019 will not be discussed here, as this was something the cast did on their own accord and is not related to the show itself. Now, my personal history with Zoe 101 is rather complicated. Unlike something like The Amanda Show, my first exposure that I remembered clearly was not reruns as a teenager or didn't start watching until a few episodes into the first season. I actually watched the show sporadically during the first two seasons. I watched the episode Prank Week the most because it was on the Teen Nick Pigs Volume 1 DVD that I had as a kid. I did watch the season 3 premiere live as it came out, and around that point, I started keeping up with the show much more regularly. Around the time of the hour-long episode, The Curse of PCA, I started watching every episode live as they came out for the rest of the series. After that, I didn't watch it for years, and around the time I discovered the Teen Nick channel, I started watching Zoe 101 reruns on there a lot. Right before I started high school, and I watched them the most during sophomore year of high school. And as usual, I went on those on and off nostalgia swings for this show a lot, and I was there when this 5 minute program released in 2015, and then I forgot about it for years until 2020 and 21. And then I rewatched the whole series in the summer of 2023 to remind myself of the lore before I watched the sequel movie, Zoe 102, to see if it would be faithful to the original series. And that was the moment I realized I went back and watched this show a bit more often than most other Nickelodeon live action shows like Big Time Rush or even Victoria's. I couldn't really explain why a few years ago, but now I can. But we'll get into that later. Right now, let's go back to 1994. Back in the 90s, the original All That was a big hit, being a sketch comedy show that stars diverse, talented teenagers compared to what Saturday Night Live was like at the time. After the first six seasons, which ran from April 1994 to November 2000, the show went on hiatus before it would be rebooted in 2002 with a new cast for a new generation. In January 2002, All That returned with Season 7 with an all new cast and none of the classic series cast members returning as series regulars, but some coming on as special guest stars. That same year, an executive at Nickelodeon suggested to then producer Dan Schneider to have Jamie Lynn Spears audition, because she was the younger sister of Britney Spears, one of the biggest names in pop music at the time. I also love this line where he says, I hope she'll be good. Jamie Lynn Spears came on for season 8 in the latter half of 2002 and stayed for season 9 in 2003. Her most well-known character on All That was an old lady guard who loves bacon named Thelma Stump. After season 9, another Nickelodeon executive asked Schneider for any ideas of a show starring Jamie Lynn Spears as the lead. This wasn't uncommon as he had previously created The Amanda Show, which starred Amanda Bynes, who had previously been on All That for seasons 3 through 5, and was developing Drake and Josh at the time, starring Drake Bell and Josh Peck, who had previously starred on The Amanda Show. In 2004, the deal was made, and Spears would star in her own show on Nickelodeon. So, what was it going to be about? In The Amanda Show, there was a sketch slash segment called Moody's Point, which had a very different writing style, filming style, cast, etc. compared to the rest of the skits in the show. 
Hi, I'm a social worker. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Me too. It was meant to expand the popularity of Amanda Bynes at the time and give her a show to star in that wasn't just sketch comedy. This was meant as more of a teen drama with over-the-top writing and a laugh track. Unfortunately, it wasn't greenlit by the network. But the ideas for this show never left the creator, and he decided to rework some of them for this series. At the time, the show was called Untitled Jamie Lynn Spears Project. This show was going to be about a girl named Zoe Brooks going to a boarding school that used to be boys only when that school started letting in girls. This would be the only live action series that Dan Schneider created for Nickelodeon that doesn't have a laugh track. What you have to realize is that we really Jim? That's the gym? Oh no, that's my bud Jim. In addition, all of Dan Schneider's other shows at the time and after this one are usually filmed on a soundstage. Some parts of some shows used to be filmed at Nick on Sunset before it was demolished in 2017. This series was filmed on location at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California. Casting commenced and more characters were created. Paul Butcher was cast as Zoe's younger brother Dustin Brooks. Sean Flynn came on as a shy, clumsy, nice guy named Chase Matthews who was Zoe's best friend in the show. Alexa Nicholas was signed on as Nicole Bristow, a perky, girly girl who's Zoe's roommate and best friend. Kristen Herrera was cast as Dana Cruz, a tomboy and Zoe and Nicole's third roommate. Matthew Underwood came on as Logan Reese, a rich bad boy who's Chase's roommate and friend, and Christopher Massey as Michael Barrett, Chase and Logan's third roommate and best friend. We also got the character of Quinn Penske, played by Aaron Sanders. Aaron originally auditioned for the role of Nicole. Even though she didn't get it, her performance was too good to go to waste, so the character of Quinn was created just for her to play. The show was eventually named Zoe 101. Filming of the first season commenced in 2004, and the series premiered on January 9, 2005. The show became a hit pretty quickly, and it didn't take long until it gained a big popularity. Season 1 consisted of 13 episodes, airing from January 9, 2005 to May 1, 2005. The series got another season pretty quickly. Season 2 was filmed that following summer. However, there was a change that would take place right before. Kristen Herrera didn't return for Season 2, and the character of Dana was written off the show. So in her place, a new character was created to be another roommate for Zoe and Nicole. This character being Lola Martinez, an aspiring actress, and was played by no other than Victoria Justice. Lola would be a series main for the rest of the series. Season 2 was filmed in the summer of 2005, and it premiered on September 10th, 2005 with the episode Back to PCA. This season had the show's first hour-long TV movie, Spring Breakup, where Logan takes everybody to his dad's house for spring break, but a misunderstanding between Zoe and Chase puts their friendship at risk. Oh my god! Oh my god! This was the final episode filmed for this season, but it didn't air as the final episode. The last episode of season 2 that aired was called Quinn's Alpaca, which aired on April 30th, 2006. Season 2 had another 13 episodes, bringing the total to 26. The series received a third season, which would consist of 26 episodes, bringing the total to 52. But with an asterisk on there, which we will address later. Because of the larger episode count for this season, they couldn't film this season at Pepperdine University. Instead, the crew went to the Man Biomedical Park in Santa Clarita Valley and built a set there from the ground up to resemble a campus similar to what Pepperdine looked like for any exterior scenes and transformed some of the warehouses in that area into sound stages for filming interior scenes, and the rest of the series would be filmed here. Additionally, Alexa Nicholas did not return for Season 3, and Nicole Bristow was written off the series. But this time, they didn't create a new character and cast a new actress. They just opted to make Quinn the third roommate for Zoe and Lola. Season 3 started filming in the summer of 2006 and continued into early 2007. 
and it premiered on September 24th, 2006 with the episode Surprise. Season 3 contained two hour-long episodes, The Curse of PCA and Goodbye Zoe. The Curse of PCA being about the gang investigating an urban legend of an old PCA student, which results in the ghost of that student coming after them. Goodbye Zoe was where Zoe debates on leaving PCA to live with her parents in London, and a miscommunication between her and Chase causes Zoe to leave for London for real. But the show did take a bit longer than usual to get renewed. Luckily, the show was still picked up for one more season, season 4, which would consist of 13 episodes bringing the total to 65, with another asterisk on that 13. Season 4 was filmed in the summer of 2007. However, some big changes occurred before this season. Sean Flynn was away for a good while, so Chase Matthews was written on an extended absence and became just a recurring character this season. When season 4 premiered on January 27, 2008, the premiere episode, Trading Places, explained Chase's extended absence as Chase planning on visiting Zoe in England, conveniently at the same time she came back to PCA to see him, and Chase wouldn't return until the end of the semester. A few episodes later, a third roommate for Michael and Logan was introduced, James Garrett, who was played by Austin Butler. Season 4 continued throughout the first half of 2008, all building up to the series finale on May 2nd, 2008, a final hour-long episode called Chasing Zoe, where Zoe and James, who had started dating back when James was introduced, broke up because of some feelings that Zoe couldn't explain right before prom, and right around the time Chase returned to PCA, and they reunited and ended up together as a couple, and the episode ends with all the characters dancing together at prom. Looks like I'm a little behind on this one. Alright, returning to these that I addressed, while I claim that Season 3 has 26 episodes and Season 4 has 13, there is something that's kinda incorrect here. The episode in question, PCA Confidential, which is a clip show featuring mostly clips of episodes from the first three seasons, aired as part of Season 4 here in the States, right after Chasing Zoe, but aired in Canada in December 2007 right in between Logan Gets Cut Off and Goodbye Zoe. So while most sources say it was filmed alongside Season 3 and it aired as part of Season 3 in Canada, Paramount Plus lists it as part of Season 4, so it's confusing. But in retrospect, it makes more sense as a part of Season 3, so we'll list it as a part of Season 3. But either way, the show still did technically end on May 2nd, 2008, whatever way you slice it making the show run for 3 years and 4 months, with a total of 65 episodes, counting the hour-long episodes as two-part episodes, across four seasons. And while the show ended abruptly for most fans, the series finale still felt like a natural ending for the show in my opinion, no matter how rushed some people said it was. But while the show was gone, it didn't go out with some debates. Everybody at the time thought the show ended for one reason, but that ended up not being true. As revealed from this interview from Sean Flynn, the show was technically supposed to end after season 4 anyway, and they never renewed the contract. At the end of the fourth season of Zoe 101, we were technically supposed to stop anyway, and then maybe renegotiate a new four-year contract. That just never happened. And the producers felt the show was starting to show its age, so they felt it was time to end it around that point anyway. But that never stopped some people. And then, in 2015, during the show's 10th anniversary, a 5-minute program called What Did Zoe Say was uploaded onto creator Dan Schneider's YouTube channel. Back in 2005, an episode called Time Capsule left many fans wondering. Chase wanted to know what Zoe said about him on a DVD she made for a time capsule where she talked about her friends, and 10 years later, this short was made just for that reason. It ended with a to be continued dot 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 question mark, implying that there was more to come. But who knows when. Years went by with nothing confirmed by Nickelodeon, but the fans constantly wondered if anything would happen. In 2019, all that was revived and several of the original cast members made at least one appearance in some way. 
In that year, several of the original cast members returned alongside Jamie Lynn Spears in an episode together, filmed in 2019 but didn't air until 2020. And that got a lot of people thinking that a reboot of some sorts would happen. However, in the next couple of years, several behind the scenes secrets that Nickelodeon tried their damnedest to keep under wraps ended up being revealed to the public, painting them in a disgraceful light. And after fans learned all that happened, I feel like that was the time the desire for a Zoe 101 reboot died down significantly. I'm sure you can tell where this is going. On January 12, 2023, a Zoe 101 sequel movie called Zoe 102 was announced to be a Paramount Plus exclusive. On June 20th, 2023, the trailer was uploaded and the movie premiered on Paramount Plus on July 27th, 2023 to mixed reviews. And that is the basic history of Zoe 101. Quite an interesting story there. But going back to the question, why have I come back to this show so often despite its rocky history? Well, that's part of it. The rocky history is something about it that interests me. If it was just perfect all the time, then that's nice in some ways, but boring in others. The fact the show added and subtracted new cast members every season was also something interesting. No two seasons had the same main characters and actors in the title sequence, and that's something you can't say about Spongebob, damn it. There is also the fact that it was filmed very differently compared to most Nickelodeon live action shows, the charm and banter of the three main guys of the show, and the fact that it had no laugh track or several cartoony sound effects just made it a nice watch whenever I was in the mood where I didn't know what I wanted out of life. I also feel more nostalgia over it during my high school years, since I watched it a lot during that time, and oddly enough, I related to that high school show way more often, aside from the fact that there were no parents of course, so to me, it feels like this was one of the most accurate representation of high school, aside from the fact that it was at a boarding school, purely by the way the characters were portrayed, since many high schoolers in real life are quite similar to the characters in Zoe 101 and I think that helped make some moments of high school feel less painful. Most of the time. Zoe 101 may not have had the best track record, but at the very least, it was still a quality show and something I always enjoyed watching as a child and even after all these years. Shocking, I know. But I loved finally getting to recap it out loud here today. I'm pretty sure I didn't leave anything out. Uh... No, I haven't sinned. 